So, Zach, what happens now with James Harden? I think we just wait. I think James Harden has to wait. I heard more similar information echoed today that it's just wait time, that Houston is not bending for now. And all of that does, I think, is bring more people to the table. You know, the Nets will be there if Harden wants them to be there, and he does. Maybe Philly comes in later. There can always be mystery suitors that come in. The longer you wait, the more time opens up for a situation to go haywire somewhere else and for another team to want to jump in. There are a lot of teams that have, not a lot, but there are three or four teams we could probably name that have the assets to get James Harden or to at least get themselves in the conversation. But right now, it's just wait and see time. One of the things that is just a reality about this is that James Harden has two years left on his contract. And while there have been players that have been able to force a trade with two years left on their contract in recent years, it doesn't give him maximum leverage. And so that means that the Rockets can wait for leverage to develop, whether that leverage develops um, because James Harden changes his mind, whether it, he widens his the teams he's willing to go to, whether there's something else happens in the league. Uh, I think it's a smart play right now. It doesn't behoove the Brooklyn Nets to make their best offer when James says, I only want to go there. And it doesn't behoove the Rockets to negotiate in a closed market. So as a result, we're probably going to get, as Zach said, that waiting game. You know, Rachel, beyond what uh, Brian and Zach are pointing out, you know, I, I've talked to some people around Houston, and part of this also is that a, Tillman Fertitta feels very hurt by this, by the idea that, he, you know, he hired Steven Silas kind of as an olive branch with the players. He was leaning toward Jeff Van Gundy. They wanted Ty Lue. Ty Lue ends up with the Clippers, so they end up with Steven Silas as kind of like the the – compromise between the two different parties and so the players signed off on it and then almost immediately say yeah by the way trade us and if that that were the case from the beginning well then Tillman would have hired the guy he wanted to hire to start with so I think part of this is beyond what Brian is talking about leverage and negotiation which I think is is astute from, from Houston's perspective part of it also is like no nah, to hell with that I'm not sending you where you want to go you're going to be here and that when you hear that statement of we're prepared for it to get uncomfortable that is them sending out the flare that yeah that's right I don't care what you say we're going to make this real uncomfortable I don't know if that's a good strategy of announcing it but it does de definitely indicate of uh, the level of hurt from the Rockets standpoint. You know, yeah, I, that was a quote to our Tim McMahon. Uh, Paul, if you were James Harden, how would you play this? Well, I mean, he's already played it the way he wants to play it. He's showed that he's been disgruntled. Uh, he's a superstar in this league, and, and these guys don't come about too often for the Houston Rockets. And, but if I'm Houston, I, I, it's hard for me to budge. But like I said, players of this caliber do not come to your franchise Almost never. He's mm -hmm. probably the, one of the top three players to ever put on a Houston uniform. And if you see him leave and go into a rebuild, I've seen teams rebuild for over 20 years, for a whole generation rebuild, uh, because they don't have this type of player. And so hopefully there's some way they can work it out. But if not, you know, I, I, I can't imagine him being there uh, before Christmas. You know, the, the crazy thing well, is... Well, look... Oh, I'm sorry. I, I was just going to say, Go ahead, the, the crazy thing is, though, we see this happen the other side. I, I get what Paul is saying, but also, if he doesn't want to be there, you got a new coach who's trying to put in a new system, how much are, is he going to be bought in into executing the new system or being amenable? We always talk about this. In the NFL, when a player doesn't like his deal or where he is, he sits out. In the NBA, when a player doesn't like his situation, he shows up and he makes things uncomfortable. And my standpoint is always the player can always make it way more uncomfortable for the team yes. than vice versa, especially when you're a star like Harden. Yes. General I, I, I hear you, and I know that's true. Yes, exactly, Gen General Soreness. I hear you, and I know that's true, and we've seen it with players certainly in the past. We saw J Jimmy Butler who said, you're, you're trading me, right? He just forced his way out of Minnesota. We've seen Anthony Davis, who a year and a half before his deal was up, said, hey, trade me. But there is still the fact, and Brian and I have had, I think, approximately 306 conversations about if a guy has two years left on his contract, like with, say, Kyrie Irving, we talked about this a lot a few years ago, <laughs> you don't have to deal him. And there is a point where an owner can say to the player, hey, guess what? You had us give up all these assets for Russell Westbrook. We got you Russell Westbrook. As you just described with the coaching situation, you had input on the coach. You made decisions differently than we might have made. You're going to play here for a little while. And we know that James Harden, to his credit, 
He shows up every day. He likes playing basketball. He is likes scoring his points. And, and I would expect some natural buy-in from him just because he likes going out and hooping. So it is going to be interesting to see how this goes going forward. If he doesn't end up going to the Nets, though, Zach, how does that influence how the Nets play the next few months? I saw Bradley Beal tweet a few minutes ago, here we go. And honestly, my heart skipped a beat because any player <laughs> tweeting anything right now, you're like, wait, what's going on? Do I need the siren? What's happening? Bradley Beal has said that he wants to stay in Washington and see how things work out with John Wall. But obviously, he has been a target and something that, a guy that people have mentioned in Brooklyn. Well, look, if the Nets' best offer isn't enough to get James Harden, I'm not sure why it would be enough to get Bradley Beal. Bradley Beal is five or six years younger than James Harden and is coming into his own as a superstar, a legit superstar in the NBA. So it remains TBD if they can really get that on the table. We'll see. There are other teams, including the Denver Nuggets, I think, with Michael Porter Jr., who can trump, who have at least one asset that trumps anything Brooklyn can throw out. Brooklyn needs to throw the whole kitchen sink unless you get to the point of throwing Kyrie in, in which case things have gone really crazy. But to your initial question... <laughs> The Brooklyn Nets have Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. We were throwing all like parties in New York because they got these two superstars. It's not like they're they they, they, they need a lot of help. They have two superstars. They're probably going to resign Joe Harris tonight. They have a good team. What the Brooklyn Nets can do is say, okay, James Harden will I guess be in the conversation for a while. In the meantime, we have a damn good team. Let's go out and play. Well, first of all, I want to clarify. Are you saying you would rather have Bradley Beal on your team than James Harden if you're the Nets? No, I'm just saying that I think their trade value, if and when they hit the market, should probably be equal, even though the James, even though James has accomplished much more in his career. He's five years older. He's two years away from negotiating another max contract. I think their trade value would be about the same. Bradley Beal is only 26. It feels like he's been in the league forever. He's still young. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.